Hi guys, uh, good evening. Uh, can you all see me and hear me now? Connection ka issue aa raha yeah i think i think we're live now uh, finally i i hopefully it'll be sorted now so everything uh, which could possibly go wrong did go wrong with there were issue with streaming keys there's issue with my ipad there's issue with youtube and uh, finally we are off uh, and um, uh, hopefully no more issues fingers are crossed uh, all of you just quickly join in i'm so sorry i apologize uh, for this uh, for wasting your 20 minutes of your time uh, hopefully i will make up for it in the next 60 minutes uh, all right so let's begin then what is btr first of all uh, btr is uh, called buri tara rato a lot of you know about it now but a lot of you do not know about it so btr is something that you know back in MBA, bbs when i was in aims uh, our seniors used to mark our books i'm sure a lot of you guys also get your books marked from seniors so hamare seniors book mark karte the likhte the btr matlab jo ultra important stuff hai usko likhte the buri tarah ratto so that is the origin of btr basically and it is just a compilation of stuff for all of you guys that you need to have in mind before going into the exam hall so uh, this is what i have basically compiled for you normally you know we ask you ki aise karna chahiye exam se pehle when you are going into the exam hall you need to know what are the must know volatile stuff so i've done that hard work for you all you need to do is memorize this stuff learn along with me and uh, hopefully we'll have many more such uh, sessions such that we can compile everything that we need to know from all 19 subjects before going into the exam hall all right so thank you so much uh, and uh, thank you for uh, thank you to praveen sir and i think sparser was also in there i briefly could catch a, a few comments from them thank you sir for for uh, coming into the live chat and engaging the students uh so uh thank you sir thank you apur sir so here we go with this so what i will be starting off uh, with is some auto antibodies that we need to know from medicine hai na to medicine and uh, अलाइड सब्जेक्ट से जो भी रेलिवेंट पॉइंट्स है उसको हम डिस्कस करते हैं या या दिस सेशन विल कंटिन्यू इन द दिस सीरीज विल कंटिन्यू इन द फ्यूचर आल्सो लेट्स सी विल सी हाउ इट गोज एंड वील आल्सो डू दिस इन हैदराबाद सो वन ऑफ द रीजंस व्हाई वी आर डूइंग दिस इज आल्सो दैट वी आर गोना बी डूइंग वन एंड हाफ डेज ऑफ बी सेशन इन हैदराबाद सो इमेजिन यू नो इफ वी कैन डू इतना इन वन आर हाउ मच वील बी डूइंग इन वन एंड हाफ आवर्स सो दैट इज दी होल आइडिया एंड वील हैव मोर ऑनलाइन सेशन एज well uh, if all goes well okay all right so let's uh begin then so these are all uh, the antibodies that we need to know as far as connective tissue diseases are concerned and then we will have a few more antibodies that i'll be talking about so ana remember and i'll tell you all of the relevant points that you need to keep in mind so this will be very rapid this will be very high yield so just keep your ears open if you are writing right quickly but just listen to every single line that i am telling you okay so ana remember is the most sensitive anti antibody right that we have all right so when we talk about sle when we talk about sle the most sensitive antibody that we have is ana in fact according to the new new 2019 criteria which is the ular criteria this is an entry criterion means you need to have ana positive to start thinking of sle so this is an entry criteria that we need and we need a level of more than 1 is to 80 the pdf is there on the telegram group all right it's there on the telegram group we'll post it on the cerebellum channel as well right now it's there on my channel which is dr zainabora uh, nipi ji okay so this is the most sensitive antibody for sle when we talk about anti ds dna remember this is the most specific antibody as far as uh, sle goes not the most specific but a specific antibody and why it is very important clinically is because this correlates very well with the activity so this correlates with the disease activity and this increases in flares so remember this has the best co sorry 
just hold on there are a few more issues which were not anticipated and which are happening yes <laughs> so today's class is also a live lesson in how do you uh, stay calm in panic situation you know a lot of times in your exam you will have everything which could possibly go wrong is going wrong like your connection is not working your system is crashing down and still how do you still be in zen mode and take a class or give your exam that is what is going to be the live demonstration this is a live demonstration of that <laughs> okay actually my ipad cable is a bit loose i need to get it changed so that that is what is happening it gets it's just a little bit of movement and it moves so that is what is happening but you guys know and you guys know so this anti ds dna it correlates with disease activity anti histone antibody we need to know that this is responsible for drug induced lupus tell me drug induced lupus what are the drugs that you would consider we want to consider the ship drugs right so sulfa drugs hydralazine isoniazide procainamide these are the four drugs which are responsible for drug induced sle very nice anti sm is the most specific i told you ds dna is pretty specific correlates with activity most specific but not sensitive is anti sm antibody okay anti c1q is another antibody which correlates with disease activity so this also increases in flare so very important medicine question is ki jab bhi flare ho raha hai a q exacerbation or right? what are the two things that you will see so one we will look at anti ds dna i will look at anti c1q or the other way around i will look at complement levels going down okay so ye do cheez apne ko dekhna hai then coming on to neuronal antibody so again very uh, logical neuronal but they'll not ask you this they'll ask you glutamate receptor 2 so this is the one which correlates with the findings of cns lupus so this is what is activated in findings of cns lupus all right anti ribosomal p for anti ribosomal p what is it this is the one so p for psychiatric manifestation so when you have cns psychiatric manifestations of lupus you will have this antibody which is ribosomal p now why is ribosomal p in red it is in red because it is very important that you do not confuse it with ribonucleoprotein u1 rnp is something which is there in mixed connective tissue disorder right so these are two things which you will confuse so ribosomal ribonucleoprotein so remember ribosomal p p for psychiatric and rnp is ribonucleo protein all right then we have anti ro and we have anti la all right so anti ro la yes these are both in jogrens but as far as sle is concerned you need to remember ssa or ro bacche rote hain yes so from that you can remember ro se neonatal lupus all right so neonatal lupus and the baby will have con uh, congenital heart block that correlates with the activity of anti ssa fine so that is what we know from this anti jo anti mi2 these are antibodies which are seen in dermatomyositis right so these are seen in dermatomyositis one recent update for you so anti jo1 traditionally were dermatomyositis but now there is a new syndrome which is anti synthetase syndrome all right so this is now seen in a new syndrome anti synthetase syndrome which is a sub part of dermatomyositis the hallmark i want you to remember for exam purpose is what is mechanic hands so isme mechanic hands milenge along with fever along with ild and stuff okay so this is what you want to remember so anti synthetase mein kya kya cheeze hoti hai there is fever there is arthralgia there is ild and there is mechanic hands so that is what we want to remember anti mi2 dermatomyositis good prognosis mi se yaad rakho tom cruise tom cruise is good prognosis right so that is good prognosis with mi2 topoisomerase and scl70 are the same thing they are both seen in scleroderma what kind of scleroderma diffuse scleroderma generalized scleroderma. derma when a centromere is tiny it is limited so it is seen in limited scleroderma theek hai also called as crest so these are the antibodies as far as connective tissue disorder goes and you at least get one question from this list adding on to these further antibodies that we have other than this in medicine and path one will be yeah yeah recorded video will be available anti tpo 
what is anti tpo so anti tpo is seen in hashimoto thyroiditis right so hashimoto's thyroiditis or lymphocytic thyroiditis you will have lymphoid follicles you will have germinal follicles which are present so when thyroid looks like a lymph node think hashimoto's thyroiditis okay and you will have anti tpo remember it will have transient hyperthyroidism then there will be euthyroidism and then eventually it goes into a hypothyroid phase LATS very important so long acting TSH stimulants so this is something which is there in Graves extremely important so Graves disease you have thyrotoxicosis path wise you will have a very beefy looking enlarged thyroid gland radiology wise you will have a lot of vascularity on Doppler all right you look at the thyroid on Doppler it looks angry there is so much color okay so that is about Graves histopath wise in Graves you see a finding which is called scalloping scalloping of the colloid all right so these are findings of Graves apart from that when you do a radio iodine scan Graves is gonna show a diffuse uptake diffusely gland in a warm lugging a puri he gland is showing diffusely increased uptake all right so you need to remember that there is diffuse increase in uptake on radio iodine uptake scan diffuse gland looking warm okay then anti sm anti lkm1 where are these antibodies seen these are seen with autoimmune hepatitis all right so autoimmune hepatitis again very important sm and lkm1 smooth muscle and lkm1 liver kidney microsomal antibody in autoimmune in path autoimmune hepatitis is very important i want you to remember a buzzword which is interface jab bhi sunoge interface hepatitis or you will hear the word emperopolysis you want to think of autoimmune hepatitis all right so very very important buzzwords for AIH AMA again very important obstructive jaundice diya hoga you will have a young female with obstructive jaundice you will have xanthalesmas osteopenia think of PBC primary biliary cirrhosis primary biliary cirrhosis mein kya finding milega path mein path mein you will get a finding where you are having florid duct lesions lots of inflammatory cells florid duct lesions bolte hain on the other hand the differential of PBC is what we have primary sclerosing cholangitis and usi ka antibody hota hai PN ka because PSC is associated with ulcerative colitis or IBD inflammatory bowel disease so remember PSC PBC versus PSC. Primary biliary cirrhosis, young female, florid duct lesions, AMA antibody. PSC, PNK, and the kind of duct lesions you'll have is onion skin. All right. As far as radiology is concerned, PBC radiology will be normal, MRCP will be normal. Whereas in PSC, on MRCP, you will have multifocal strictures. You will have a beaded appearance, multifocal biliary strictures giving rise to a beaded sort of an appearance. All right. So this is PSC versus PBC, a independent question. Now going on to PNK, where else will you have PNK? So one is obviously inflammatory bowel disease. Apart from that, now going on to the territory of vascular colitis per se colidocal cyst again investigation of choice mrcp see any biliary duct you can remember mrcp is the investigation of choice most of the times okay right so now again remember one more thing psc very high risk of cholangiocarcinoma okay it has a very high risk of cholangiocarcinoma going into vasculitis so pn ka cn ka small vessel vasculitis mein milega isn't it pn ka kis small vessel vasculitis mein milta hai microscopic polyangitis and chirk strauss chirk strauss is now called eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis so this tells me that this has dual mechanism auto antibody bhi hai and it is granulomas also fine and c anka is wegener's granulomatosis or granulomatosis with polyangitis again granulomatosis so this also has dual mechanism okay this is very very important aska antibody kaha milega so we were discussing ibd uc me p anka hai to aska kis me milega cron so remember c Crohn's disease will have anti-saccharomyces cerevisiae. Okay. RF, rheumatoid factor, I'm sure you know most sensitive for RA. What is it is the frequently asked question. Kya ye IgM hai ya IgG hai? So this is IgM antibody against the FC part of IgG. So iske liye yaad rakho MRF tires. We have MRF tires. No? So remember it is actually IgM antibody against the FC part of IgG. What about anti-CCP? It is the most specific antibody for rheumatoid arthritis.
Glutamate decarboxylase is seen in type 1 autoimmune diabetes, right? So, type 1 diabetes autoimmune, we have glutamate decarboxylase and parietal cell is seen with where is antiparietal cell antibody seen? So, this is seen in pernicious anemia, wherein you will have B12 deficiency, yeah, because intrinsic factor and H plus, both of them are secreted by the parietal cell. Intrinsic factor nahi hoga, to B12 absorption nahi hoga. That is why you will have anemia, megaloblastic anemia. Okay, so this in a nutshell like takes care of almost all of the questions on autoantibodies. Hopefully, two to three questions will come from this list. All right. So now going on to microbio, right? Very, very rapid revision of all the microbio eggs. First of all, you again get one question from all of these eggs. So the first egg that you see here is a plano convex sort of an egg. So this is seen in Pinworm, this is the egg of Enterobius vermicularis. So, this is seen in Enterobius vermicularis. It will cause a lot of perianal pruritus in children. For INICT, remember an extra H point, we do an NIH swab test for this condition and there is a scotch tape test. All right. So, there are two te tests that we do to pick up these pinworms when they come out of the anal canal. So, this is Pinworm. You can see how it is white. It is non-bile stained. We'll compile a list of things which are non-bile stained. All right. So this is one of them. Here, the most commonly asked, the easiest egg barrel shaped. Dono taraf ek ek mucus plug hai. This is trichuris trichura. So dono taraf barrel plugs hai. Naam may be same word two times aata hai. Trichuris trichura. All right. Then. We have two eggs which are of Ascaris, the largest nematode that we have. So, here one is fertilized, one is not fertilized. How do we remember? After fertilization, the egg will swell up and a pregnancy, we will swell up, uh, egg also will swell up. So, this is fertilized egg, round egg. So, this is fertilized egg of Ascaris. On the other hand, oval egg, unfertilized. So, this is unfertilized egg of Ascaris. Okay. When you see as a round round, can you see how there are round round blastomeres here? So, this name may be as a round round. Aega. So, this is hookworm. Hai na? So, this is hookworm. Ankylostoma nicator. Ankylostoma was the old generation hookworm. New generation hookworm is nicator americanus. Hai na? So, americanus new generation. The only worm which comes, doesn't come as an egg, but comes as a worm. So, what is this? This is an ovoviviparous. Jesse egg bantai seedha hi, it will form the worm. So, this is strongyloidus. So, they can give you this image and ask you what is this? So, this is strongyloidus and which form, which larva is this? So, this is rhabditiform larva, all right? So, this is the rhabditiform larva of strongyloidus, which will come by, infect via skin. So, remember, strongyloidus and hookworm, both of them are inf gonna infect via skin, but so, this is about nematodes in a nutshell. Quickly looking at the cystodes. So, cystodes may when you see these radial radial striations, this is tenia. We have tenia solium, we have tenia saginata. Remember, for all of the cystodes, so cystodes that definitive host is gonna be man. So that is clear. Definitive host is man. Tenia has two hosts. So one is definitive, one is intermediate. So when we talk about tenia solium, what and we have tenia saginata. So, what is the secondary or intermediate host of solium? It is pig. And for saginata, A aata hai. So, uska secondary host is cattle. All right. So, this is how we remember tenia. We, it causes neurocysticercosis, right? So, when we have eggs of tenia, even vegetarians can have tenia solium eggs through vegetations and you can have neurocysticercosis. On MRI, you will see tiny, tiny multiple T2 hyperintense lesions with a central scolex called as a starry sky appearance. Do not be under a misconception ki hamesha hi starry sky. You can have a single NCC also, right? So, that is something which is very, very important. Then, look at this egg. Can you see how this is not bile stained? This is H. Nana. So, H. Nana in Gujarati. I don't know how many Gujaratis are here, but Nana means small, baby. So, this is also called as dwarf tape firm. This is also called as dwarf tape firm. And this is non-bile stained because it's a small baby. We do not want to stain it with bile, right? So, this is H. Nana dwarf tape firm. Do you think a baby egg will have more hosts? No, a baby egg will only have a single host. So, only one, only one host is present. So, definitive host is the only host that H. Nana has. On the other hand, this one here is H. Diminuta. So, even though its name is Diminuta, 
it is not diminuta it is a rat tapeworm right so this is also called as rat tapeworm because its intermediate host is rats okay and finally the one which is an operculum normally operculum is a feature of trematodes here this is the only cystode which is showing you an operculum like this so this is what what is this egg this is diphyllobothrium latum also called as fish tapeworm right and this is a cystode which has three host definitive is always going to be man second is cyclops third is fish and what is very important this is going to go into the ileum and it will block the absorption of vitamin b12 so this causes again vitamin b12 deficiency anemia so right now only we have discussed two causes of vitamin b12 deficiency anemia d latum and one was pernicious anemia right so this is about the cystodes now talking about trematodes so trematodes remember every egg will look similar they will have this sort of an operculum so they will not ask what they will ask is the exception of the trematodes which are these three what are these they do not have operculum but they have these spines so ye kon hai sirse spine sirse yes schistosoma so these are all schistosomas and we need to know the uh, type the species of schistosoma based on the spine so when there is a lateral spine this is s mansoni so here we have learned one story that there is a girl called mansi who is very late who is very teda she would go to the teacher after class and discuss stuff you know and ask questions and whatever so s mansoni has a lateral spine and what it does such people do not do well in life do they they don't do well they will fall inferior so this affects the inferior mesenteric plexus yeah so this is s mansoni inferior mesenteric plexus teddy lateral spine on the other hand when you do not see any spine spine is absent so japanese people are all very flexible right they are all very flexible because they have no spine so this is s japonicum flexible people without spine no spine ye kahan jayenge do japanese people do well in life they do very well in life isn't it so what we want to remember they are going to affect superior mesenteric plexus superior mesenteric plexus and finally when you have a terminal spine like this so when you have a terminal spine are hematological cancers terminal yes so that is why this is s hematobium and with that same metaphor terminal this will also cause malignancy so this affects the vesicle or pelvic plexus and this causes squamous cell carcinoma of bladder squamous cell carcinoma of bladder okay it also causes pah this is the only infective cause of pulmonary arterial hypertension while we are talking of ph i will also like to tell you the dana point classification of ph okay so we have five types remember type 1 is idiopathic that is where we will use drugs like endothelin receptor antagonist right so type 1 is basically idiopathic type 2 is because of heart failure left ventricular failure say secondary upstream ph third is because of ild lung disease ke karan ph hua wherein you want to remember scleroderma scleroderma is the most common connective tissue disorder jiske karan ild se ph ho raha hai okay type 4 is when you have chronic thromboembolism and type 5 is without any cause miscellaneous so these are the five point classification just remember dana point ye jo main bol rahi hu wo dana point classification okay you want me to go 2x <laughs> i can go 2x at any point of time but just like listen to everything that i am saying all right so this is about it just to compile all of them so non bile stain kya hai non bile stain ke liye pneumonic hai neha कौन है नेहा सो वन इज एन इज हुम सो वी सो हुम इज ऑल्सो नॉन बाइल स्टेन है ना तो निकेटर एंड एनकाइलोस्टोमा तो हुक्वम का ही हो गया ई इज एंटरोबियस या ई इज Enterobius vermicularis and H is H nana. You remember nana, chota baby. We do not want to stain. All right. So these are four eggs which are non-bile stained. Okay. So this is what is very very important. Okay. So now do we want to see these mosquitoes also? Now that we are doing toxic stuff, let's just compile all of it. So they will give you image of mosquito and they will ask you identify this mosquito. So when you look at this mosquito, this is a mosquito which is at an angle. This is an adult, right? You can see that this is an adult mosquito. It is at an angle. So the only Mosquito, adult, which lives at an angle, is 
एंगल ए एन एनोफिलिस ओके एंड एनोफिलिस फॉर से याद रखो सोफिस्टिकेटेड इट इज सोफिस्टिकेटेड मच्छर वाई सोफिस्टिकेटेड बिकॉज इट ओनली गोज इन टू क्लीन वॉटर इट विल गो टू एन इंटरमीडिएट रेंज इट वॉन्ट फ्लाई वेरी फार ऑल राइट सो इट्स अ वेरी सोफिस्टिकेटेड मस्कीटो इट ओनली लिव इन क्लीन वॉटर ले एग्स सिंगली एंड अडल्ट इज एट एन एंगल एंड यू कैन सी दैट द विंग्स आर स्पॉटेड ऑल राइट सो यू विल हैव स्पॉटेड wings here on the other hand the mosquito which has stripes on body and legs body and leg space ke stripes hai and we are it lives in artificial water this has the smallest flying range and the adult is parallel ye kon hai yes so this is aedes aedes is the adult living parallel that is how you will identify and you look at its body and its legs and you see the stripes so this is the tiger mosquito aedes and when the adult is again parallel but has a hunchback as a brownish mosquito hai without any stripes this is culex okay so culex dirty dirty water all right and this can fly the farthest jo dirty mein ja sakta hai wo dur bhi kar sakta hai it can do anything right so culex dirty water 10 km okay so this is something which is very very important and with pistia this is mansonia thank you praveen sir for saying i have good handwriting you are probably the only person who has said that to me so this is mansonia which is a mucher which will have these long legs with and it lives with this plant which is pistia okay so this is what we want to remember these are the four mosquitoes that we have okay will you identify this if you can identify this you can do anything in life i feel and finally the last thing that we have a very very hairy sort of mosquito this is a sand fly all right so this is a sand fly and very very important question from sand fly is that what does it cause what does it spread so one is definitely kala azar and the other thing is oroya fever oraya fever all right also called as sand fly fever but obviously they'll not give you sand fly fever is caused by right so they'll ask you kala azar so kala azar mein they can give you this image which is a sample of the bone marrow wherein you can see these bodies and they ask you what are these so these are a mastigots of l donovani which is the organism and you also want to remember kala azar is the rk39 antigen test recent question hai na so ld bodies yaad rakho rk39 antigen you will get a patient who is presenting from bihar jharkhand with fever hepatosplenomegaly you do the bone marrow and you see amastigots all right so this is about uh kala azar very quickly very 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 important you will not write an exam without one of these propping into the paper when you see these linear nodulo ulcerative lesions and the person is a rose gardener कोई भी गार्डनर हो नॉट नेसेसरी रोज गार्डनर वॉट इज दिस दिस इज स्पोरोस सो स्पोरोस स्प्रेड बाय स्पोरोथ्रिक्स शेंकाई विच इज अ डाई मॉर्फिक फंगस नॉड्यूलर लीजन मिलेंगे स्लो स्लो करेंगे तो कवर नहीं कर पाएंगे यू कैन ऑलवेज सी दिस इन द रिकॉर्डेड वर्जन ऑल्सो आई वांट टू कवर मोर स्टफ एंड वी ऑलरेडी वेस्टेड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम नो सो दिस स्पोरोस इज रिमेंबर फ्रॉम रोज ओनली on histopath you will see this rosette right so this is called as rosette of conidia appearance so here the buzzword is going to be a rose gardener who's having these nodulo ulcerative lesions in a linear fashion sporotrichosis rosette of conidia is what we want to remember on the other hand the buzzword वॉटी लीजन यहाँ पे भी हिस्ट्री दिया होगा गार्डनर है और समबडी वॉकड बेयर फुट ऑन द बीच एंड नाव यू हैव दीज लीनियर लीनियर लीजन विच आर वॉटी दैट इज द बज वर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वॉट काइंड ऑफ बॉडीज दीज आर बॉडीज विच आर लाइक सो सो फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट दीज आर स्क्लीरोटिक बॉडीज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज कॉपर पेनी बॉडीज also called as muriform bodies also called as medullar bodies so itne sare naam hai isliye itne sare sawal hai so this is chromoblastomycosis right so warty lesions is the buzzword warty lesion hoenge yahan pe nodulo ulcerative lesion hoenge and when you find foot with discharging sinus right so here the buzzword is discharging sinus this is madura mycosis right so this is mycetoma or madura mycosis so mycetoma can be either fungal so this could be madura mycosis which is because of a fungus or this could be because of actinomyces when you have actinomyces you will have yellow sulfur granules actinomyces is it aerobic or anaerobic it is anaerobic remember actinomyces khud hi batata hai a no anaerobic no is it acid fast no on the other hand nocardia is 
aerobic and it is acid fast all right so remember acti no a no anaerobic no acid fast no it will cause a lot of discharge sulfur discharge and it will be from the mandible so they can give you history of mandible may say discharge are a chronic osteomyelitis of the mandible or they can give you a foot here okay so very very important actinomyces black granules more common in the fungal counterpart madura foot madura mycosis okay so this is very very important drug of choice for actinomyces is penicillin drug of choice for nocardia is cotrimoxazole all right so these are two things which are very important both of them why am i comparing actinomyces and nocardia because both of them are gram positive filamentous bacilli right so they are both filamentous that you may want to remember okay extremely important and yes when you have such a clinical appearance very nice anya one more dd is botyromycosis so is botyromycosis a misnomer or is it correctly named mycosis means fungal so is it fungal no it is a misnomer but tyromycosis is caused by staph aureus right so whenever you have such a picture three dds you want to remember okay all right so ye hai hamare linear ya foot wale picture ka pattern approach hai na so that is what you need to learn ratne wali cheez hai theek hai but pattern is what you need to recognize foot dekhte hi seedha jump nahi karna that it is porotrichosis see what is the pattern and that is what you will uh, be Uh, going into all right now going uh, into uh, maltese cross appearance so we have maltese cross appearance that you will see in rbcs and you will see in urine so when we see maltese cross appearance in rbc what is the diagnosis yes it is babesiosis can somebody tell me the vector of babesiosis hard tick right so it is spread via hard tick on the other hand agar urine crystals mein aa raha hai very very important fabris disease and the other differential is nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome mein lipiduria hota hai jiske karan se you can have maltese cross appearance in the urine crystals all right so these are two dds very very important in fact fabris has been asked previously right so this is about maltese cross looking at all of the inclusion bodies we do get a lot of questions from these so when you see this large sort of an inclusion body what is this this is hp henderson peterson body hp bodies which are seen where very very important these these are seen in molluscum contagiosum molluscum contagiosum remember are going to be these umbilicated lesions right so dome shaped umbilicated lesions pearly white lesions so many times this has been asked so the moment you see central umbilication large bodies henderson peterson this is molluscum contagiosum cerebellum diya hai cellar stain cerebellum cellar stain yes so we are on cerebellum us cerebellum mein infection ho gaya agar cellar stain what is this these are negri bodies which are seen in rabies all right so cerebellum ke sath sath purkinje jaise cells of cerebellum are affected and hippocampus is affected right so two areas by rabies and then what do we have here when you have multi nucleated giant cells you have margination and you have molding three ms margination molding multi nucleation so this is herpes simplex virus herpes simplex virus remember we'll show you cowdery a bodies all right cowdery a theek hai what are these this is a cytopathic effect this is not an inclusion body this is a cytopathic effect what is this this is yes so this is hpv which is making coelocytes right so these are coelocytes that you are having in the pap smear so pap smear mein jab peripheral clearing ho jayega perinuclear clearing ho jayega so this is an effect that human papilloma virus will have hpv virus is a dna virus rna virus hpv is a dna virus right so it's a dna virus what about molluscum contagiosum it is a dna virus rna virus very very important molluscum contagiosum doesn't have the word pox in it but it is a pox virus all pox viruses are dna viruses pox viruses are dna viruses which have a complex symmetry baki saro mein icosahedral symmetry hota hai pox virus mein complex symmetry hota hai all right what are these these are again these are cells which have intranuclear plus intracytoplasmic inclusion so these are wardin finkeldy cells kahan pe milte hain wardin finkeldy giant cells i'll give you a hint bachcha hai with fever rash which is spreading from cephalocaudal sparing the palms and soles and he has some sort of spots opposite his molars so he this is yes seen in measles and the spots are 
coplic spots, pathognomic of measles. And when you see basophilic owl eye appearance, what is this? This is CMV. SI owl eye appearance, but eosinophilic is Reed Sternberg cell of Hodgkin's lymphoma. CD50, CD, CD15, CD30 positive. Okay. So, this is about the bodies. Again, this may say, ek image aata hai, very, very important. Now, quickly going into forensic. So, forensic mein ballistics is something that causes a lot of problems for you guys. So, very, very quickly, I will just simplify it. So, anytime a gun is fired, remember you want to think of three things. B, B, T. So, from the flame, we have burning. Alright, so burning is the hair which gets burnt. From the smoke, we have blackening. And from the unburnt powder, we have tattooing. So, burning would be burnt hair. What is blackening? Blackening is the blackening of the skin and this is something which is smoke so it can be wiped off. If I take a cloth it can, this can be wiped off. On the other hand tattooing as the name suggests is deep in the dermis. So do you think this can be wiped off? No this cannot be wiped off. So this is how you will know what is it. It's blackening or it's tattooing and finally you have the bullet which then enters and it will have a grease collar and an abrasion collar. So grease collar, abrasion collar. So any ballistic wound you want to approach it like whether there is burning, blackening, tattooing and whether the collars are there or not. So, when I have a contact injury, when I have a contact shot, jo contact skin ke saath hai, there will be two main features that you need to remember. I have already sent the PDF in the group. Yes. So, this is the contact shot wherein you will have a margin which is cruciate. So, one, when you see cruciate margin, it is definitely contact. When you see C for cherry red, when you see cherry red discoloration, it is definitely contact. Will you see any of the BBT? Burning, blackening, tattooing? No. BBT, everything will be inside the wound in this case. You will see that sub kuch na under aara hai. BBT is inside. What is BBT? Burning, blackening, tattooing. Okay. Then, when we go into close injuries, Close injury mein kya hoga? Tino hi milega. Can you see how there is blackening, there is burning of the hair? So, I will see everything. Blackening, burning, tattooing. That is a close range wound. When you see that BB is not there, burning and blackening is not there, but all of these are spots. Can you see these spot spots? And this is the entry wound. So, these spot spots are the tattooing. So, this is your near or intermediate. Any of these words would be used. Near or intermediate, there is no BB there is just T, right? So, that is how you know that this is near or intermediate. And finally, when you are not seeing anything, BBT mein se kuch bhi nahi hai, and I am seeing a grease collar and an abrasion collar, this is a distant wound, theek hai? To bas, it is so simple. We make such a big deal out of this. This is so simple. So, contact C wala, cruciate and cherry red. Close matla BBT sub mil raha hai. Near intermediate BB nahi hai, only T. And no BBT, distant wound. Fine, so simple, isn't it? So, this is how we approach ballistics. Going into snakes. Machar pechan liya, ab saap bhi pechanenge. So, what are we seeing here? These, the upper row is all category which is neurotoxin. Alright. So, these are all rifles. Anya, this is all rifle. In shotgun, you will have chota chota pellets. Alright. You will see multiple pellets in a shotgun. So, this is about rifle. Okay. Right. So, when we go to the first category, upar sare elapide hai which are your neurotoxins. So, the first two are cobras. Kon hai king cobra, kon hai common cobra. So, when you see this, when you see a hood first of all, hood dekh ke pata chalega, it is cobra. Then we look at these spectacles. Who wears spectacles? Common janta or king? Have you ever seen a king wearing spectacles? No, right? So, this is common cobra. On the other hand, hood is there but no spectacles. This is king cobra. Thik hai? Then we have crates. Crates mein kya hai? So, this is a general crate, normal crate. On the other hand, when the bands are yellow, it becomes a banded crate. It's a banded crate. Alright. So, crate cobra. Ka ka wale sare hi hai. Neurotoxin wale elapide. Okay. Then, what is this? Kut saap hi apna naam bata rahe. There are V's here. So, ye kwaan hai? Ye hai viper. Alright. So, this is viper. And viper mein kya hai? V for vasculotoxin. Right. So, this has vasculotoxin which causes DIC, hemolysis. That is very important. Okay. And what is this saap? You can see only it's lying on a C. Na, beach pe leta hua hai. So, this is a sea snake. And sea snake have what kind of toxin? 
they have myotoxin right so they are myotoxic okay so this is about the snakes and their toxins and their poison so neurotoxic upar wali category hai which are all of your illapide okay fine going ahead pdf is there on the channel uh, neat pg with dr zainab bora टेलीग्राम पे ले लो आई पोस्ट इट ऑन द सेरिबेलम ग्रुप आल्सो सेरिबेलम के टेलीग्राम चैनल भी है यू गाइस कैन जॉइन इट आई विल पोस्ट दैट लिंक आल्सो एंड आई विल पोस्ट द पीडीएफ देयर आल्सो ओके राइट नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू टॉक्सिको ऑल ऑफ दीस सीड्स एंड अगेन दीस आर क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर गोना कम सो व्हाट इज दिस द फर्स्ट थिंग दिस इज एब्र सो आई वांट यू टू रिमेंबर ए सी आर अमेरिकन कॉलेज ऑफ रेडियोलॉजी इज वन सोसाइटी दैट वी हैव ऑलराइट सो दिस इज इन ऑर्डर ऑफ ए सी एंड आर सो द फर्स्ट वन वेरी रेड एंड वेरी ब्यूटीफुल इज एब्र सबका ही एक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स गोना be very easy abrus ka active principle is abrin right so this is called as this is called as cattle poison um, guleti and a lot of other local names it has right so this is abrus precatorius it has the toxin which is abrin what is this this is a very rough rough croton all right so this is a croton which is looking very very rough and what is this this is ricinus croton in hindi is also called as jamal gota and ricinus in hindi is or hindi or normal language is called as castor so all of the parts of castor are toxic except for castor oil which is safe hai na castor oil you must have seen babies ko bhi lagate hain pilate hain so castor oil is very safe fine so this is acr then this is very important all of you will recognize because of this tip it can be used for marking hai na so this is marking nut also called as semi carpus right so this is also called as semi carpus the active component is semi carpin or bilvanol right so ye uh, bruises karta artificial bruise from forensic only how do you distinguish artificial bruise from a true bruise remember artificial bruise will have associated irritation and itching and there will be associated vesicles normal bruise mein vesicles nahi honge so two points it will be itchy it will be itchy and it will have vesicles got it and finally jo rbc jaise dikhta hai even one toxin can kill you what is this this is strychnin right so what does strychnin do it in it causes yeah so it acts like tetanus isn't it it acts like tetanus because it causes inhibition of glycine it inhibits the release of gaba and glycine so that is why you will have basically a lot of contraction a lot of contraction postures like opisthotonus pleurosthotonus is what you will have okay so this is strychnin even a single crushed seed is going to lead to death all right so this is presynaptic inhibition post synaptic inhibition of gaba so this is post synaptic remember tetanus is presynaptic t e pre All right, so that is how you don't confuse tetanus. Maybe T आता है pre-synaptic. Okay, thank you so much for all of the love, guys, and I'm uh, I'm so grateful that you guys stuck around. It got late, but still you guys stuck around and you are still sticking around. So thank you so much. Right, so this is strychnin versus tetanus. Two plants that we have. So this is the violet plant that we have. What is this? Very very important. So this is aconite. This is a cardiotoxin, isn't it? So aconite है या फिर monk's hood बोलते हैं इसको. Devil's horn बोल मीठा जहर बोलते हैं दिस हैज कार्डिया टॉक्सिसिटी राइट सो दिस विल लीड टू समथिंग लाइक लाइक टू कॉल एस हिपोटेंशन तो क्या है हिपोटेंशन सो दिस कॉजेस हिपस एंड लो बीपी हाई हिपोटेंशन ऑल राइट सो हिपस एंड हाइपोटेंशन एंड व्हाट इज दिस दिस इज कोनियम मैक्यूलैटम सो ये वही है जिसने सोक्रेटिस को मारा राइट सो दिस इज कोनियम व्हिच किल्ड सोक्रेटिस दिस इज द हेमलॉक ओके नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू एसटीआई किट्स ऑल राइट गोइंग ऑन टू एसटीआई kits so very quickly we have all of these colors uh, so the gray kit so we have all of these mnemonics that you create for sti hippus is the alternating contraction and dilatation of pupil okay in sti kits we are going to remove all of the mnemonics that you have heard so far we are just going to do it very clinically and that is how you will uh, remember so the first kit that we have is gray kit to aaj se gray kit ko bolenge great it is not gray it is great why is it great because one kit can lead to treatment of three things what three things urethritis cervicitis painful scrotal swelling so it can treat urethritis cervicitis painful scrotal swelling so we say great teen din cheeze ek sath theek ho gayi what are the two causes of this the two causes <laughs> the two causes of this uh, yeah actually my energy is not on the inside it is only on the outside as of now so we have urethritis cervicitis painful scrotal swelling so these the two common causes for both of them is chlamydia and gonorrhea 
क्लैमिडिया गोनोरिया रिमेंबर हमेशा आर ट्रीटेड टूगेदर दे आर ऑलवेज ट्रीटेड टूगेदर सो वी आर गोन ट्रीट दम विथ टू ड्रग्स सो अजिथ्राल वन ग्राम स्टार्ट सेफिक्साइम फोर हंड्रेड एम जी स्टेट ठीक है तो ऑर्गेनिज्म याद रखेंगे एंड द ट्रीटमेंट बिकम सिंपलर एजिथ्राल वन ग्राम एंड सेफिक्साइम फोर हंड्रेड सो अगेन द ट्रीटमेंट इज स्टार्ट सो वी से ग्रेट ऑल राइट सो दिस इज गोन बी द कॉमन किट दैट वी हैव ग्रेट थ्री थिंग्स अजिथ्राल सेफिक्साइम गोइंग ऑन टू द सेकेंड वन विच इज वजाइनल सो वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज इज ग्रीन फॉर दिस वी हैव अ न्यूमोनिक वेरी न्यू दोज ऑफ यू सीन फ्रेंड यू नो रेचल ग्रीन या सो रेचल ग्रीन इज अ फीमेल सो दैट इज हाउ वी रिमेंबर वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज ओके सो फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन आई जस्ट स्पॉइल्ड फ्रेंड्स एंड रेचल ग्रीन फॉर यू फॉर एवर सो एनी टाइम यू थिंक ऑफ फ्रेंड्स नाउ वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज ग्रीन किट ओके अब तो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द ट्रीटमेंट वॉट यू वॉन्ट रिमेंबर इज द डायग्नोसिस तो क्लिनिकली याद रखोगे तो किट का ड्रग बिकम्स वेरी इजी सो वेन एवर यू हैव वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज विच इज पैथोलॉजिकल थ्री थिंग्स यू वॉन्ट सी आई मीन थ्री डायग्नोसिस आर देर यू सी द टाइप ऑफ डिस्चार्ज इफ देर इज फिशी ओडर नो इन्फ्लमेशन यू आर फाइंडिंग दीज क्लू सेल्स विच आर द एपिथीलियल सेल्स जिसके ऊपर बैक्टीरिया चिपके हुए हैं वेन यू एड के ओ एच यू हैव अफ टेस्ट वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस दिस इज बैक्टीरियल वजाइनोसिस ओके सो दिस इज बैक्टीरियल वजाइनोसिस ऑन दी अदर हैंड वेन यू हैव ग्रीनिश डिस्चार्ज इन्फ्लमेशन है कॉल्ड एज स्ट्रॉबेरी सर्विक्स एंड यू हैव ट्राइकोमोनाज वॉट इज दिस वेरी क्लियर दिस इज ट्राइकोमोनियास स्ट्रॉबेरी सर्विक्स स्ट्रॉबेरी वजाइना ग्रीनिश डिस्चार्ज ट्राइकोमोनासिस सी फॉर कॉटेज चीज सी फॉर Candida, and this is the only vaginitis wherein the pH is gonna remain normal. Remember this, pH is gonna remain normal, and we will have pseudo hyphae. So now, the treatment of B vaginitis and trichomoniasis. Dono ka hi treatment metrogel hai. Candida ka treatment fluconazole hai. So what should we have in the uh, kit? Two drugs only: metrogel, fluconazole. Now metrogel is a seven-day course. I do not want to do that. I want to give stat treatment. So instead of metrogel, we have secnidazole. So secnidazole two gram will take care of bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis, and fluconazole one fifty mg stat. Again, stat treatment. ठीक है. So this is secnidazole, fluconazole. साथ साथ vaginitis का approach भी हो गया. Very quickly going on to genital ulcer approach, and then we'll come back to the kit so when we are thinking about genital ulcers we have to divide into painful and painless any time we have painful ulcers if there are erythematous red sun rahe ho erythematous erosions naam likha hua hai vesicles likha hua hai this is hsv this is herpes simplex virus all right one or two std is hsv1 or hsv2 this is hsv2 remember hsv1 above the diaphragm herpes labialis gingivostomatitis is hsv1 encephalitis is hsv1 okay so this is hsv2 and the other painful erosion right which is very ulcerated undermined edges this is chancroid chancroid is caused by hemophilus ducreae so from this you remember ducrai rore painful so this is caused by h ducrai all right so painful ulcers can either be hsv or it could be chancroid on the other hand painless ulcers when you see this prototype indurated ulcer hard indurated without any pain this is the primary chancre of syphilis on the other hand ekdam opposite beefy red ulcer hai this is what this is Calimatobacter granulomatosis, right? So this is granuloma inguinal, Klebsiella or Calimatobacter inguinal. So this is granuloma inguinal or donovanosis, also called as donovanosis. And finally, when the ulcer is painless as well as transient, ulcer to dikhai nahi, but the patient is presenting to me with a lymph nodal swelling like a bubo. So this is a bubo which is showing you a groove sign, inguinal ligament ke upper or niche groove sign. Bubo caused by chlamydia, LGV, right? So lymphogranuloma venereum, L1, L2, L3 serovars, L2 is the most common. Okay, so these are the differentials. So now, how do we approach the treatment? इसमें से कैन यू अग्री की एच एस वी तो वायरल है शुड बी ट्रीटेड सेपरेटली विथ ए साइक्लोवे बाकी ब्यूबो इज ट्रीटेड सेपरेटली ऑल दीज थ्री आर द वन विच आई वॉन्ट टू टारगेट तो इसमें सिफिलिस इज ट्रीटेड बाई पेनिसिलिन एंड शैंक्रोइड एंड ग्रेनोलोमा इंग्वाइनेल आर ट्रीटेड बाई अजिथ्राइल सो नाउ विथ दिस थॉट लेट्स है लुक एट द किट्स 
सो so, जब हमारे पास नॉन हर्पेटिक अल्सर है आई हैव टू ऑप्शन फर्स्ट इफ देर इज नो एलर्जी टू पेनिसिलिन व्हाइट पीस पे है नो एलर्जी सो व्हाइट किट में बेंजाथीन पेनिसिलिन इज व्हाट यू विल हैव एंड यू विल हैव अजिथ्राल सो यू हैव बेंजाथीन पेनिसिलिन एंड यू हैव अजिथ्राल ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ द पेशेंट इज एलर्जिक राइट इफ द पेशेंट इज एलर्जिक टू penicillin we replace penicillin with doxycycline and azithral remains as it is hypersensitivity will we become very blue to hum blue ho jayenge cyanos ho ke blue ho jayenge so that is how you will remember blue kit theek hai so remember non herpetic ulcer peaceful white penicillin azithral sensitivity ho gaya penicillin ko blue ho jayenge blue kit doxy and azithral on the other hand red were herpes ka ulcers red yeah ulcer ka herpes ulcers were red so the kit is also red so this is going to be a cyclovir tds for 7 days all right so herpes is red and finally do you remember we left bubo in a separate category so b for bubo and b for black which is kit 7 for bubo you want to remember that bubo is bad it is not a good disease to have right so bad bubo a and d we will give azithral and doxy azithral and doxy and finally the last thing is yellow low for low abdominal pain yellow low abdominal pain is for pid pid remember dcm dilated cardiomyopathy is what you want to remember so doxy cefixime metrogel doxy cefixime metrogel yes this video will be available you can revise it any number of times that you want okay so this is how we remember the kit so very quickly now revise with me gray was great we were treating three things urethritis cervicitis crotal swelling with azithral and cefixim stat so that was great second vagina was green rachel green green vaginal discharge we had secnidazole to treat two things and fluconazole to treat candida then we went to ulcers ulcers mein humne kara painful versus painless clinical approach again you get short short questions from that so there we first want to treat three ulcers which was chancre chancroid and granuloma inguinal so for that i am using white kit which has penicillin and azithral if sensitivity to penicillin is there we replace it with doxy and we have doxy azithral in blue kit for red herpes we have acyclovir and finally for bubo bubo is bad black kit azithral doxy and then when we go to yellow lower abdominal pain we have dcm so doxy cefixime metrogel tell me do you want mnemonics for this or this is done this done right so this is how we will remember sti kits and we will do two very very high yield topics along with that so now i i need to stop but i will definitely take more sessions there's a lot of stuff which you know we can do uh, but uh, i'll have to stop here uh, it is late and my daughter needs me so i need to go but i will do this and hopefully next time there will be no technological issues like today i am very sorry for that so next time will be uh, more efficient and we'll sort out our technical issues uh, beforehand okay so thank you so much i hope this has been useful i tried to cover a lot of things in the 30 40 minutes which i had uh, next time we'll have more sessions and we'll have a, a, a longer session okay so thank you so much and i'll post this pdf on the group for sure so see you all in hyderabad very soon guys so we'll be meeting on um, 29th and 30th i'll be with you on 29th and 30th in hyderabad wherein we'll have half a day of radio and one and a half days of uh, btr wherein we'll compile all of these high yield topics and revise them together thank you so much guys bye